I just recently did a Bible study on Genesis and the story of Rachel and Leah just spoke to me in such a practical way. So Rachel and Leah lived a soap opera, a plot of desperation for love and acceptance filled with envy, jealousy, and self-centeredness. You would think they had social media. And I say that with a winky face because obviously they didn't. And even though social media can be used for good, it also stirs a ton of envy and jealousy in all of us today, right? Actually, many of us would take sabbaticals from social media because we blame social media when we start to feel consumed with envy, jealousy, comparison, longing to be accepted, etc., etc. Now, I am by no means saying that you shouldn't do it, but what I want us to recognize today is that those desires are not an external issue. Even though it can heighten it, these things really are an internal issue of the flesh, of the sinful world. Leah and Rachel didn't have social media, and yet they lived and breathed envy, and many of their decisions were made from that place. Now, how many of us today do exactly the same? So instead of blaming external influences, we really ought to dig deeper within and recognize that the only source of those feelings is really the lack of truly understanding who we are in Christ, a lack of identity and purpose. But the good news, when we do gain a better understanding on who we are in Christ, we will be able to understand the beauty of a different way of living. And this way, His way, it brings an immense amount of abundance, joy, peace. It changes our lives and the lives of everyone around us. So the story of Leah and Rachel is a messy one, messy in many ways. Just like our own society today, it looks very similar. Envy, jealousy, selfishness, self-centeredness. Every person is out to gain as much as they can for their own gain. It's a culture this world has created, injected with lies from an enemy that tries to teach us that we will only be happy when, we will be fulfilled when, we will only be satisfied when, but, 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 we have Jesus. And Jesus teaches us the exact opposite. I love this about Jesus. I love how he modeled for us a different way to live. Paul wrote a beautiful letter to the church in Philippi in which he advised the people in the church to have a selfless attitude like Jesus did. That means thinking of others as better than ourselves and looking out for the interests of others. Jesus was selfless when he came from heaven to earth and died for us. Let me read this beautiful passage to you in Philippians 2 verse 1 to 4. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Not do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests interests of others. Oh, so encouraging. So encouraging. If Leah and Rachel had any bit of this scripture in their hearts, <laughs> their story would have looked completely different. The culture in which they lived, though, caused a lot of their mindsets and outlook. Same as today. Leah and Rachel were taught by culture that their worth was in who they married. Their worth was in when they married and how much their spouse loved them and how many children they were able to conceive. That was where they found their worth. Works, doing. If I have this or that, I will be worthy. If I can do this or that, I will be worthy. This was normal within the context of Genesis. And of course, at that time, Jesus didn't walk the earth yet. Jesus did not model a different way to live yet. They didn't know any better. But we do, hallelujah, we have his word. Jesus came to show us a different way to live. Jesus came to show us how to go against the ways of the world. He came to show us how to not conform to the culture, not do things with selfish ambition, to be humble and praise others instead of looking to praise ourselves. He came to show us how to not conform to society, but instead do things His way. And that way is to think about others above ourselves, to speak truth even when it's hard, to act kindly even when someone doesn't deserve it. It's hard. 
But honestly, if we are insecure in who we are, if we doubt our value and our worth as a person, it's not possible to do things this way. So that really is the key here, to understand who we are in Christ, to understand that when our Papa God looks at us, He smiles. Not because of what we do, how we perform, and how many kids we have like Leah and Rachel thought. He smiles at you. He smiles because you are His child, because of who you are, not because of what you do. Do you find yourself doing things in order to up your value at work, in your relationships? Do you sometimes catch yourself looking at what others have and thinking, what do I need to do to get that, instead of being happy for them? Do you feel unworthy if you don't perform well enough? Is your worth in your grades, in your children's grades, in their achievements and their performances? What team did they make? What school did they go to? Every single blessing you have in your life comes from the Lord, not because we are great or good, but because of the covenant God has made with us through Jesus and the promises He has given us in His Word. So I want to challenge you today. If you have areas in your life where you catch yourself leaning towards doing in order to be blessed, catch yourself in the moment by asking yourself, wait, am I doing this to get something or am I doing this because I get to do it? It's about changing our perspective and a completely different focus. You are worthy. You are amazing. You are precious. You are enough just being you. The righteousness of Christ Jesus in you is what makes you enough. And Ephesians 2 verse 11 says, you and I are his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. And when he looks at you, he is so proud of you, even when you mess up every single day because of who you are in Christ Jesus.